time for a member statement. The member from uh, Kitchener South Hespeller. Thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker. The uh, the month of Ramadan is uh, coming to a uh, close now, uh, late uh, late Friday, early Saturday. I've had the opportunity, uh, as many of us have, to uh, attend a number of Ramadan events, community iftars. Uh, I've also been to several uh, Ramadan bazaars and Eid bazaars. Some have seen the, the henna on my hand. What I wanted to, uh, to, to comment on as far as my community, um, first of all, a couple of the bazaars I've been to. So these are, um, these are uh, organized shopping events, basically, that are uh, focused around particularly jewelry, clothing, uh, um, handbags, uh, but they're real community events, and one of the things I noticed when I was there is um, how uh, many female entrepreneurs uh, this really gives an opportunity for. So when you go there, most of the sellers are women, and it's this, uh, this incredible community. Uh, I also had the chance to go to an iftar head held by the uh, organization Muslim Social Services in Kitchener-Waterloo, and I, I really wanted to give them a shout out. They're filling uh, a really important void in the mental health space, which is offering mental health supports that have a cultural sensitivity that would be otherwise missing. Um, understanding that sort of uh, socio-religious background is very important when it comes to building strong societies, and they're absolutely essential in that space. I wanted to thank them for inviting me to iftar. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statement. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, OPG is currently in talks with New Brunswick Power over the ownership <coughs> and operation of the Point Le Pro nuclear plant. I asked the Minister of Energy last week what he would do to protect Ontario from taking on debt or financial risk in any deal related to the plant. His assurances were just boilerplate. They were not comforting. Since then, media reports from New Brunswick indicate the power company there is looking at a number of options, and one article noted, and I'll quote them, that could include giving up direct ownership and management of some power generation so that outside companies absorb more of the cost and the financial risk. I think it's a pretty clear statement. New Brunswick Power has over $5 billion in debt and says the status quo can't continue. Last year, poor operations at Point Le Pro cost New Brunswick Power almost $400 million in losses. New Brunswick Power is also talking about the option of a partnership arrangement with OPG that some say could shield from New Brunswick regulators and allow OPG to take on financial risk. Speaker, the people of Ontario have no interest in taking on someone else's debts and losses. Our hydro rates are high enough. We don't need to subsidize another province's power company. The Minister of Energy should make sure OPG is focused on looking after Ontario and not signing agreements that put us in harm's way. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statement, the member from Peterborough, Cortha. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Peterborough Regional Science Fair conducted its 54th annual event last Tuesday. This fair is held at Trent University, bringing in hundreds of bright young students. These students showcase their experiments and compete for the Canada-wide Science Fair. It is, it's encouraging to see students explore scientific explorations this way and shaping our youth to promote a better future. From this year's fair, four projects will be sent to the Canada-wide Science Fair in Edmonton next month, from May 14th to the 19th. Peterborough's very own Isabel Young will be representing Peterborough at the national level after coming in second place with her project. Her experiment specializes in forensic sciences. Isabel is only in grade nine, but her passion for science began at a young age and she's now able to explore it nationally. As a finalist, she's paired with a master's student from Trent University to tweak and finalize her project. Speaker, this is an exceptional way of connecting our future scientists at all different levels of education. Congratulations, Isabel. I wish you good luck in Edmonton, and I know I speak for everyone in Peterborough City and County when I say how proud we are of you to have someone with your passion for science. We look forward to cheering you on as you contribute not only in Edmonton, but also as you progress throughout your journey in the field of science. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. This week is National Volunteer Week, and it is a time to recognize all of our hardworking volunteers who make our services and programs in our communities possible. Volunteers are really the fabric of our community, so it is only fitting that this year's theme is volunteer volunteering weaves us together. Through working together and sharing this time, the interconnected actions of volunteers strengthen and support our communities. There are countless volunteers in Hamilton Mountain who make our community what it is. Whether it's running coldest night of the year, operating the food bank, or driving seniors to their appointment, the list goes on. In fact, 52% of Hamilton 52% of people in Hamilton volunteer, which is higher than the national average. The one thing they all have in common is their dedication to helping others in any way they can. I know I am thankful for volunteers who have come out to support me over the years because the work we do here is not possible without them. Volunteers help our children, our seniors, our neighbours, our families, our friends, our pets, the environment. The list is endless. So I want to say thank you to all of the volunteers out there because your selflessness and willingness to dedicate your time to others is worth being celebrated. Congratulations and happy Volunteer Week. Member statement, the member from Edmund, Elkin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you, Speaker. I rise in the House today to honour a friend, a colleague, and an exceptional leader from my riding of Elgin, Middlesex, London. Last month, on March 11th, sadly only two weeks before his 70th birthday, Duncan MacPhail passed away. He was an active farmer and egg producer. He grew up and spent his life on his family farm where he also raised his own family. He was also a great customer of my former employer, Master Feeds. A strong community advocate, Duncan also served as West Elgin's mayor. I believe it's fair to say, Speaker, Duncan MacPhail was the voice of West Elgin. Duncan was a man of honour and integrity, and he was truly loved throughout Elgin County. Duncan served on council from 1988 to 2002 and returned to politics in 2018. In 2001, 2000, 2000 2001 and 2019, Duncan served as Elgin County's warden. He also served as deputy warden last year in 2022. This meant that Dunk had an unmatched wealth of knowledge. I certainly appreciated his advice, guidance, and the time I was fortunate enough to work alongside him, his experience, his wisdom and sense of humour was appreciated by all in Elgin County. We have lost a steadfast leader, and I know Duncan McPhail will be greatly missed by his family, his community, and the many, many people who called him friend. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you, Speaker. There was some exciting hockey on Tuesday, and I am not talking about the pitiful Leafs first uh, playoff game. Uh, in my riding, the Allen Cup, which is Canada's oldest national hockey championship, is being hosted, and that hockey is exciting. The Allen Cup is the national senior hockey champion. Really, it is the oldest hockey championship in Canada, and it began on uh, April 17th in, in, in Dundas. Um, after a three long year COVID hiatus, the real, the real McCoys are happy to welcome all the great teams from across Canada back to the beautiful Great My Arena in Dundas. Teams and their fans are coming in from Newfoundland and Alberta to compete in this prestigious competition and the community is very excited. Uh, Don Robertson, uh, the well-known president of the Real McCoys, is among the most excited. Um, he had this to say, that he felt it was so important to keep the Allen Cup going and this brand of hockey alive. Don Robertson, himself a Gold Stick honoree, uh, said that hockey has such an important place in our history, and this week Canada came to Dundas. It will be the third time the Real McCoys have hosted this uh, Canadian local iconic championship, and the Ontario Hockey Association said, we are proud to be bringing this event back to Ontario. It only seems appropriate that the oldest hockey association in Canada is hosting the oldest hockey championship in the country. So let me thank the volunteers, let me t thank the teams, and the cup is being awarded this Saturday, and if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to go with the Real McCoys. Go Real McCoys this Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. 
Speaker, this government heard loud and clear during pre-budget consultations that homelessness is not only a huge problem in urban areas, but it's also an issue in rural areas like my riding of Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thanks to this Ontario government and the great Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Millions of new dollars were invested in this year's budget and for years to come to assist our exceptional local organizations that lend a helping hand to the most vulnerable people under the Homelessness Prevention Program. Speaker, I spoke with Emily Hollington, who is the Director of Social Services for Lanark County, who said, we are pleased to see the Ministry's increased financial commitment to the Homelessness Prevention Program. Knowing the need, Emily is very thankful for this new funding. Lanark County will receive a total of almost $2.5 million in 23-24, which includes an additional investment of nearly $1 million. The additional Homelessness Prevention Program funding will help the county address the complex needs of people experiencing homelessness and will enhance our initiatives in preventing homelessness. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's 23 budget is supporting those that have fallen on hard times in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston and across the province, people who are experiencing or at risk of experiencing homelessness. This government will continue to take action on homelessness prevention and provide more people with not only a place to call home, but hope for a better future. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley East. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, the people of Don Valley East has, as of late, unjustly had their voices silenced, discounted, and cast aside. I'm referring to a string of decisions made about us without us. First, the Federal Electoral Boundaries Commission issued an un unanticipated recommendation to eliminate DVE as a riding. The response from my constituents has been clear. They were not offered community consultation, they do not want this change to happen, and they know it will be reflected at provincial and municipal levels. Arbitrarily dividing up our riding will tear apart neighbourhoods that are politically, socially and culturally intertwined. Cutting and pasting ridings together negatively impacts people who rely on organisations, services and uniquely tailored political representation. And Don Valley East is a distinct part of Toronto. It needs more than just representation, it also needs a soul. The Ontario Science Centre is one of the crown jewels of Toronto, promoting culture, employment, prosperity, education and recreation. Meanwhile, the government has been planning on its demolition without a shred of consultation. The Minister of Infrastructure's feeble machinations about a so-called business case fool nobody, and the Science Centre station is the very definition of a bait and switch. The people of Don Valley East deserve honesty and a chance to be heard and the province is taking notice. On their behalf, I say, you will not tear down and relocate the Science Centre without a fight. It is a community institution, an architectural wonder, and the protector of our cherished ravine lands, which you, may not, which you must not pave over with so much new housing already being built in the area. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Month of Ramadan is ending. From dawn till dusk, Muslim fasting to purify the soul and practice staying away from wrongdoing for 30 days. This week, they will clear up the celebrating Eid al fit a joyous occasion where the faithful offer gratitude. On this day, prayers are offered, kinships are strengthened, the charity for the unprivileged is given. Mr. Speaker, mouth-watering feasts are held and shared with the family, friends and neighbours and just about anyone in need. It is believed that absolutely no soul shall go unfed on the day of Eid. Fasting brings soul cleansing, self-discipline and focus. Fasting makes one empathetic and sympathetic to understand the pain of hunger and starvation. Mr. Speaker, on this Eid, I feel pain for Islamic society of Markham in my riding, who face unwanted incident during the Ramadan. I also met with the leaders of the mosque and common the resilience and perseverance of Muslim brothers and sisters. Our government protect religious freedom. Everyone can practice their faith and belief without the fear and intimidation in our beautiful province. I wish Muslim community happy Eid, Eid Mubarak. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Member Statements, the member for Flamborough, Glanbrook. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Speaker. I want to take the opportunity this morning to congratulate the 2023 Flamborough Chamber of Commerce Outstanding Business Achievement Award winners. Each year, the Flamborough Chamber honours the best in corporate excellence and community service at its Outstanding Business Achievements Awards Gala. This year, six local businesses and individuals were recognized for their exceptional service. The Waterdown Village BIA received the Community Service Award for demonstrating exemplary business practices and its dedication to involvement in the community. IG Wealth Management took home the Large Business Award. The Small Business Award went to Birmingham Consulting. Benchmark Plumbing was awarded Entrepreneur of the Year. This award recognizes an individual who shows extraordinary energy, inspiration, leadership, and innovation in their business practices. While the Lifetime Achievement Award went to former Hamilton City Councillor Judy Partridge. Christina Birmingham received the FCC Award, which recognizes a Flamborough business that has made an outstanding contribution to the Flamborough Chamber of Commerce. This was the first time in three years that everyone could get together in person. Flamborough Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Matteo Patricelli made a point of thanking the local businesses who worked together to make this gala evening a success. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.